And I thought we'd uh, throw up a video blog today. I want to thank Lisa McDonald, our assignment editor here at Chex Television, for using my flip video camera to uh, record this. But uh, a lot of talk about tsunamis, and this is the first time, uh, being as how this tsunami is affecting Japan, that we've had such great footage to see what a tsunami actually looks like. And we're getting rid of a lot of the misconceptions with what tsunamis really do look like. We have to thank NHK. This is Japan's national broadcaster. Uh, they have cameras everywhere just awaiting natural disasters because this is a country that is so prone to natural disasters. It's right on a subduction zone where the Pacific Plate is jamming itself under Japan and that is causing a lot of earthquakes. This being a top 10 earthquake, uh, one of the most powerful on record. All right, well, let's take a look first of all at what the misconception is with uh, tsunamis because I want to describe the difference. This is what you're used to seeing a tsunami as and I hope this comes across on the video blog. This is from Deep Impact shows this massive, uh, what you'd call a tidal wave, I guess, or a big wave cresting as it approaches the beach. This is why people think tsunamis look like giant waves that you'd see folks surfing on in Hawaii. Unfortunately, that is not what a tsunami looks like. It doesn't look that cool, but it can be just as devastating as that, uh, as that movie, uh, as you saw in Deep Impact. Uh, in fact, even if I were to Google tsunami, the first image that pops up is something like this. Again, this is a wind-driven wave. This is not a tsunami. You can see that wave uh, really starting to arch over. These waves roll under the influence of wind. And you'll see uh, folks uh, surfing waves 40, 50 feet high off the coast of Hawaii. That's why Hawaii is such a famous surf spot. The difference between that wave and a tsunami is a wave like this never gets past the beach, even though they're 50 feet high. Today's tsunami in Japan, uh, you're looking at a wave uh, approximately 7 meters high. So a wave around 20 to 25 feet tall, and it gets way past the beach. So I thought we'd show you the difference between a tsunami and, uh, and, and how a wind-driven wave uh, works. First of all, what causes a tsunami? Well, the main cause would have to be uh, due to a slide or a slump under the surface of the ocean. That's caused by an earthquake. Today's earthquake in Japan, 8.9 in magnitude, this is a huge, hugely powerful earthquake. And what that slump or slide does is actually displaces a lot of ocean water. Uh, you can see on this cool graphic that I found on Google, uh, you have the slump or the slide that's forcing that water up and it's driving that swell across the Pacific Basin. These uh, swells can travel, or a line of uh, tsunami can travel as fast as a jet aircraft. You're looking at 500 miles per hour uh, in the open ocean. That is how fast these waves can travel. And if if you were in a boat and this went by, your boat would rise and fall and it would move by rather quickly. You wouldn't actually experience a very devastating thing. It's when that wave starts to interact with the land that we get the devastating uh, quote called wall of water, I guess, as it pushes on land. Uh, here's a regular wind-driven wave. You can see they have a peak, they have a trough, they're all individual and they roll onto the beach where they well, are absorbed harmlessly by the sand. A tsunami, it's almost like a tide coming in quick. Imagine the Bay of Fundy. You see the tide come in in a matter of hours. What was once uh, land is now underwater. If you were to speed that up exponentially, that is essentially what you're seeing with a tsunami. It's a rapid flood, almost like a tide, and the edge of that wave or the edge of that frothy flood that is pushing on shore, well, that's not just the, that's not just the end of the tsunami. That is uh, just the beginning. As you can see, an entire mound of water in behind that can rush on shore for a very long time. So that essentially is the difference between a wind-driven wave that can be 50 feet tall and the tsunami which has caused so much devastation in Japan today.